All right, so we should be pretty familiar with that formula up there right now, right? That's our basic discount dividend model uh, formula, which is showing us our dividend yield on top of our capital gains yield. Okay, now the, the thing that we're looking at here is that where does that P1 actually come from, right? So if we do this, if we lag this back one time period, we drop it back one time period, right? Is that we say that P1 is equal to D2. Right, or dividend in our second time period plus one plus r plus p2 divided by one plus r. Now what we're seeing here is that this is basically the same exact equation. The only thing that has changed is the subscripts. Okay. Now what we see is that we have a time period difference. We go from zero is equal to, to the time periods in time period one. Right. So p0 is equal to d1 plus p1. Okay. When we look down here, is that we're saying one right is determined by things that happen in the second time period all right so in the first equation how many time periods are there between 0 and 1 there's one time period and the second one where we have p1 is equal to all these others what do we have here there's one time period from 1 to 2 okay so we have one time period in between each of them there's essentially the same exact thing but what we're able to do here is that we say all right we have p1 right so we can plug this part right here into that part up there on p1 Okay, so that's showing us then that P0 is going to be equal to D1 divided by 1 plus R plus D2 divided by 1 plus R squared, okay, plus P2 divided by 1 plus R squared, okay? And all that is is that we just pl plugged in the algebra there, right? Is that we said, all right, we took this statement right here and plugged it in there and then divided the whole thing by 1 plus r, which is how we get to the squares down here. Okay. Now what we can do, and I'm not going to just go through this a whole lot, but it's that we can plug in all this other stuff. Where do we actually come up with P2? Where do we come up with P3? Where do we come up with P1? It's all based off of the dividends, right? Is that we're looking forward facing, what do we think the dividends are going to be, and then we're backing it into our current valuation, right? So um, what we're showing here is that we're showing a couple different dividends here, all right? And then we're showing our price in time period two, okay? Now the reason that we're looking at this is that there's a couple things that we're going to be going into, and I'm just going to uh, kind of shine a light to, to where we're headed, okay? Is that this is the basic equation, the dividend discount model, and what we're going into next is we're going to be going into a constant growth. Okay, because what we don't know is that it's like, all right, where does that P2 come from? Where does that come from? So what we're going to think about is, all right, all right, we can take our current dividends and then we can estimate a growth rate. How fast do we think this company is going to be growing? And then we can just extend out those dividends forever and bring them back to a current time period. And that's what we're going to be going into is this constant growth model. Uh, it's also called the Gordon growth model. Okay. It's the Gordon growth model or the constant growth model. They're essentially the same thing. Um, and then after we get that, that constant growth model together is that we're going to be able to put this together and we're going to be able to show what happens when we have uneven growth, right? Let's say we're looking at a tech company, just a, a brand new startup in Silicon Valley. And we're saying, all right, they have astronomical growth. They're going to grow at 50% for the next five years, right? That would be pretty substantial growth. But we know that that is too high of a growth rate for them to sustain indefinitely. So we know that is not actually going to happen, okay? So what we have to do is we'll say, all right, we'll have 50% in rate of growth for the next few years. But then after that, it's going to slow down to, say, 5% of growth. And so what we're able to do is we have that uneven growth rate, and we're going to be basically using that equation that I detailed up right there. Okay. Now keep in mind, when we're looking at this from the math, is this tough math? Uh, not really. You've done all this stuff before, right? We're just calculating lump sums here. Right? We're, we are taking that basic lump sum, we're taking the value of the cash flow, and then we're discounting it back. The thing to keep in mind when we're doing all this stuff on all the stock valuation models is that we have to say, all right, how many time periods, this is the important part, time periods, how many time periods are there in between the time I receive the cash flow and the price that, uh, and the, the time period I'm actually looking at? Okay, That is the most important part. How many time periods between cash flow and the price I'm estimating, okay?